Good morning. Welcome to Admiral Markets, folks and traders. Thanks for joining us. We're going to take a look at strategy in today's uh, session. First of all, though, be aware of these disclaimers. First of all, this video or this webinar and later on this video is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Take a look at this link, AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity for more information and details on that. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the device of an independent financial advisor for more information on that and to find out if it's suitable for you. This webinar is not advice and it's for informational and educational purposes only. Plus, by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are also aware of the risk involved when trading. So in this uh, basically strategy session, uh, I'll be diving into patterns, fibs, in oscillators and fractals and combining them to make discretionary technical analysis i'll be using those tools to one define the trend and momentum two look for opportunities within that trend and momentum or against it depending on uh, on what uh, the market structure is saying uh, for instance fibonacci and patterns could be opportunities to to trade such a dip in a trend three to look at filters that could be stopping a good trade from developing and four if those three steps are all green light, then I'll be looking at where I want to trade it, how I want to trade it, and what the reward to risk is in such a scenario. All right, before we take a look at the market, you know, we're not gonna be looking much at live setups, more on strategy, of course, as the, uh, the webinar says. Uh, moreover, actually, of course, with uh, an important event as tomorrow, the Brexit vote or Remain vote, uh, the market is uh, slowly probably going to you know, have less movement, have less uh, price action. It could be going quiet. It could go sideways. It doesn't have to entirely, but you know, the chances of that developing uh, are increasing. The chances that price will not move and the volatility will die down are significant. From today's point of view, we have some red tagged events, yellow tagged events, uh, for instance, consumer confidence and existing home sales. So take a look at your uh, economic calendar always before trading and make sure, of course, that everything is in, uh, in line with what you're looking for. Oh, let's see. Oh, well, any other accident, I clicked on this WebTrader button, as you can see. WebTrader, uh, by the way, is a great way to uh, access the charts without downloading the software that could be useful, for instance, if you're traveling or if you're on the, on the road. If you want to be mobile, then the MT4 web trader version that Admiral Markets has made is a great thing for that. And I think technology is one of the reasons why Admiral Markets has also won uh, the best broker award in the UK, best MT4 broker award in the UK last year. So that's something that uh, you might want to check out um, on the market, Admiral Markets website. All right. So regarding the charts, here we go. You can see that uh, we had downside on the euro dollar last week, uh, yesterday, excuse me. And that's something I was saying uh, that I was looking for a bearish setup despite the upside on the daily chart that we saw uh, when looking at this, we see basically an uptrend channel. If you connect the bottoms here, you can see that very clearly. And uh, I was looking for a downside against that trend based on a couple of things. First of all, we had a strong bearish candle Monday, we also were at resistance, as you can see very clearly, like this. Furthermore, from a psychological point of view, I don't think the market was uh, going to break out to the upside due to the event on Thursday, tomorrow. And uh, therefore, I thought that the resistance was going to be used as a bouncing spot. And the more confidence you have that a certain support or resistance level will act as a bounce or a break, you know, the, the, the better it is, of course, for, for trading it. Uh, sometimes support or resistance is, can be used both ways. And then I rather wait for price action to show me how price will respond to a support or resistance level. However, sometimes confluence is very strong. There are multiple reasons why price will break or bounce. And uh, therefore, it, it's it's seems more uh, it's easier to to distinguish and trade in one direction right sometimes the support of resistance can be used for both the bounce and the break in other cases i would only look for the break or the bounce 
Now, for those that are maybe not familiar with break or bounce, break is basically when you have a support or resistance like this trend line. A breakout would be a push above it. A bounce would be then a move away from it, using it as, as a level that basically cannot break. Okay? So that's, and for all support or resistance levels, we can use this concept of bounce or break. Of course, some levels will not be strong, will not be that useful. Others will be very, very useful and, or have a lot of confluence and make them very tradable. And these are very strong decision zones um, and, and are very good to trade uh, at these zones. And it's good to avoid trading basically when price is not at a clear juncture, it's not at a clear decision spot. Okay, because uh, if it's, let's say, floating in the middle, let's say it's halfway a pattern. Let me give you an example as I talk about patterns. Uh, let's say the price is um, okay, let's look at this pattern here, right? We had a, a clear triangle right in here. So if price is about halfway here, uh, you know, it's not that advantageous. I, it's not impossible to trade, but the space either to up and down is limited. So there is value in waiting for price to reach support and wait for the bounce or take it at the level rather than trading it um, you know, too close to the middle or at the middle. Okay, That's what I mean with waiting for price to basically reach and approach a distinct uh, and decisive uh, area of decision. Patterns are useful for that. Fibs are very useful for that because when we draw a fib like this, for instance, like yesterday, if we zoom in back to the hourly chart, I was saying I'm not expecting price to break above the top, but I would expect price to respect one of these fibs. All right, ultimately it didn't actually. It respected the 61.8, <clears throat> okay? But those fibs, in, however, do pose a resistance and they do you know, offer a clear um, resistance spot, entry spots, so those FIBs are also very, very uh, good decision levels, just like patterns are, basically. And we're going to talk about one more thing today. I said FIBs, patterns, this is quite long, uh, oscillators and fractals. Fractals too, same thing. Fractals too can offer very good decision spots, right? Um, very important sometimes. And we had that on the four-hour chart, in fact. One of the reasons why I was looking for your dollar downside yesterday was because we, first of all, had you know six candles not breaking this top, all right? Now, you might wonder what the candle count has to do with fractals. Let me explain. This is candle number one, by the way, that doesn't break this high. This is candle number two. This is candle number three. This is candle number four. This is candle number five. And that's already a, a warning sign that we're probably not going to continue to the upside anywhere near, you know, anywhere soon. It's going to probably take a substantial correction before we move higher. And the sixth candle is, is basically the confirmation. Um, when we have six candles, five to six candles that are not breaking a high or a top or bottom, then that impulse, the momentum is most likely over. It is not a 100% rule, but it is a pretty accurate uh, guideline. So what does it have to do with fractals? Fractals are support or resistance levels that occur on the chart when two candles to the left and two candles to the right do not break a high or a low. All right, in this case here, this is a, a support fractal because this candle, this candle, this candle, and this candle did not break the middle candle low. Doesn't have to be exactly two, it could be more, but the minimum is two. That's when you get a fractal. But fractals, that's the definition of a normal, like let's say standard fractal. But I use an additional fractals, two additional fractals. I use fractals that have five and fractals that have 13 in them as well, not only two. Why do I use five and 13? It has to do with the fact that swing highs and swing lows are completed when we have five candles not breaking a swing uh, a top or bottom. So five fractal, in my opinion, and I'm talking specifically with the Forex market now, is 
perhaps more important than a fractal of 2. A fractal of 13 is important because that's when the consolidation actually could end. So with a fractal of 5, the consolidation zone most likely starts, or the correction, whereas with 13, there's a high chance that it could be completed. So um, these are basically, these diamonds and these circles are fractals that are indicating uh, exactly that, 5 and 13. Uh, to me automatically without me having to count the candles. So that is that is neat. It's something that I um, had programmed or made. I asked someone to program for me. So this is a custom made indicator because um, it, you know it's not the standard thing. But if you think that's interesting, you can always write me an email and we can help you with that. All right. There we go. Let me correct that email. Just give me one second. All right. So if you're watching the recording, you could pause this and write this down. And if you're live in this webinar, then I guess you can I'll write it here in the chat. And you should be able to copy that from the chat, I do believe. So that's if you're interested. If not, no problems. Not everyone uses fractals, um, you know, they are, uh, I wouldn't say very popular necessarily, but I do appreciate them. So that is something, wait, why did I take it away? I'm not sure, I'll just keep it there. No, you can pause the video, so that's okay. So basically what happened was six candles did not break this top. We had a light green that does actually mean that you know five candles have not been able to break that top. And um, one of the, extra reasons why I thought we would get downside besides the market psychology and the resistance. All right. Um, so price made a downside, use the fibs as well, by the way, and hit the target 112.50 as we determined before, and it's bouncing up that 112.50 as we speak. Now, it didn't get into my fib area of desire, but if you use candlesticks, like, um, you know, if you use patterns, for instance, you would be able to see that this is a uh, more or less a bear flag. It went to the 50 fib, <clears throat> so we can still consider that a bear flag. And the break of the bear flag was this candle, for instance. That would have been a good breakout candle um, for downside with a good candle close near the low, a decent size. And if uh, if this or this candle is taken, you get a good move of about 50 or 80 pips uh, intraday trade to the downside. That could have been the alternative. So if price doesn't get to the fibs. Then the breakout would be the base of the backup to still take that trade. Alrighty. So that is uh, basically, if we look at, I would say, fibs. If we combine fractals and we have patterns, you can see how we, you know, derived in the live situation yesterday to a potential trade on the zero dollar. Uh, how about if we add the oscillators here and tie that into the mix? That's the last thing I wanted to talk about. And I know it's a, a long list, but um, we'll just you know go one by one. The oscillators, of course, are very good for divergence and to see if basically the momentum and the trend is running out of steam. So if you have divergence on multiple time frames, if you have divergence on multiple divergences on one time frame, the more Basically, the stronger it is, the more divergence, the more powerful the response will be. If you have a single divergence on the five-minute chart or even the hourly chart, that is not necessarily uh, a very, you know, a, a reversal sign. It could be a bit of, you know, one small reason to be cautious, but um, it's not on its own uh, worth a reversal trade in most cases. So. For our chart already changes that thing changes and in that case a single divergence is actually uh, powerful and, and definitely something you want to be very much uh, on top of and, and be aware of and take into account in your analysis so i have two oscillators here uh, i mean we could use any oscillator i guess um but if we use the, these just as an example sake and i think if you use your own you'll see probably something similar that the momentum, as you can see here, the dark blue, right, momentum was lost when we went into thin blue 
And it actually happened very early. And that's what I like about this particular oscillator myself is the fact that uh, it, it reacts so, so close. It's, it's a very good measurement of momentum and, and correction. So you can see that actually on this candle, actually prior to the breakout, momentum was already lost. So that is, you know, quite, um, in my opinion, quite, quite strong, right? Obviously. Now, it would have been worth a short there, perhaps. Um, perhaps on the next candle would have been better. But in any case, this was already a warning signal. Uh, this, this basically is showing that we're in uptrend because we're above the zero line, both the, the, the bar and the line. But they are orange, indicating that there is not the you know, momentum to the upside on this hourly. So that's how the oscillators looked uh, at that time. <clears throat> I think uh, we can say that the hourly was confirming downside, in my opinion. Um, and the four hour was retracing, as you can see here, which we know that that, was, that made sense. Uh, from a 50-minute point of view, because it was an intraday trade, we can use the 50-minute chart for the break of this flag, basically. And uh, we see, let's take a look. When do we see momentum kick in? About here. All right, so if we're looking for, for instance, on a 50-minute chart for break pullback continuation, then another way to do that would be to wait for the red to occur on the momentum bar here, you know, the momentum on the oscillator, excuse me, and then look for the first pullback like here, for instance, right? And that could have been on a lower time frame, still a method to, to join the breakout uh, before it uh, moved lower. Now, we don't always get that pullback, don't get me wrong. And um, in that case, sometimes even just taking the breakout candle on the 50 minute chart, that would have been this one, right? Right here. And you can see that actually we have divergence between these tops on the 15 and that we're losing momentum here as well. So I think the oscillator shows how you know that could be a support in making decisions as well. So you know now we covered it from four angles. Uh, let's take a question here from Zitan. Uh, let's see, Etish is having problems with the sound. So if you would be so kind to write yes if the sound is okay, that would be perfect. And I can tell Itesh that uh, it's probably a headset issue okay great thank you so much all right <clears throat> so zitan was asking the 5 and 13 fractal count works on four hour charts uh, I use it actually on all time frames, but on a five minute chart, what I do want to be careful of is very strong momentum. Then in that case, you know, five is not going to hold it. What you basically uh, could do uh, is use a bit of confluence with five and the end of the day. For instance, the London ends and we have a five fractal. Well, that's a great moment to, to look for a move against a trend. Or let's say we have an uptrend. Uh, let me find a bit of an example. <clears throat> Maybe the Aussie. All right. Just want to use this example, okay? Just a theoretical example. Let's say we're, we're in uptrend. Um, yeah, this is still a bit early to say this is uptrend, but okay, let's say this is uptrend, okay? And we're looking for basically a continuation of the uptrend. What we can do when we have a deep retracement like that is then dive into the five minute world, wait for a five fractal that indicates that the downside momentum is over, and then look for long, basically trying to trade with the momentum and trend here. So on this, when you have a trend, right, and you get the pullback, when is that pullback over? In that case, you can use the five fractal rule to get an idea when the one of the earliest spots when the, the, the pullback could be over and the trend could be continuing. That's how you could use the five fractal, even on a very low time frame. Now, obviously, low time frames um, might need a bit more experience to use it. But I do think from that point of view, the, these, these fractal numbers are, are useful on all time frames.
But I do want to add a warning that on lower time frames, you know, you got to be uh, more cautious with that. So if you're interested in that, uh, as some, then just write me an email. Let's see. There you go. Okay. So, uh, uh, let's see. Let's give an example. Does anyone have a pair? Maybe instead of me choosing, uh, let maybe let you choose a particular pair that you want to take a look at. We'll be looking at the past because at this moment I don't think there's anything. Well, we can look at something live now, but I don't think um, it's it's maybe the best day to 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 plan anything for myself. But we can take a look. Does anyone have a particular pair in mind? Aussie. Okay. Cool. So let's take a look at these Aussies. Or these Aussies. The Aussie. <laughs> uh, let me get rid of this email. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll use the monthly chart. All right. We're getting into a spot where we have actually, um, this is the fifth candle. So, at, you know, nine days from now, roughly, this dark red fractal is going to turn pink. And that means that basically the momentum to the downside here might, in that case, have reached its bottom. Now, I don't want to say that the whole downtrend is over necessarily, but what we do see is that this particular swing high from here to here could be finished. All right. Now, why do I not necessarily count this? All right. Because these are mini swings within the bigger swing. All right. Um, as you can see, this was basically the, the biggest swing here from here to here. Using those fractals, you can see that pretty clearly looking at the diamonds there. Um, if this turns light pink, then there's a good chance that this swing high swing low is over. And we might be retracing part of that swing. And who knows, after that, we can still move down lower. You can use actually a fib on the swing high swing low. All right, to, to get an idea where those resistance fibs could be, right? So if we use a fib on that swing high swing low at the end of this month. This is most likely uh, the monthly swing, new, the new monthly swing high swing low. So the 50 fib, the 61.8, just like the 38.2 fibs, will be strong resistance spots where price could basically stop and, and turn back down. <clears throat> okay. So at this moment, it looks like more bullish retracement on the monthly. And if we look at other things, perhaps besides fractals, if we look at the uh, uh, the oscillator you can see is in the retracement mode, indicating that we don't have bearish momentum at this point. All right, the weekly, uh, we see had strong momentum here, and basically the momentum to the upside is stronger than the momentum to the downside if you compare you know, the, the push up to the push down here. We also had divergence between these bottoms, like that. So this could easily be a continuation to the upside, and you do see that last week actually that the oscillator turned here to the upside. We have uh, moving averages that are actually green and starting to switch to the upside here, as you can see. So more basically bullish confirmation of that. Obviously, from a weekly perspective, we're still very much so in a in a in a you know down vibe. If you look at the diamonds here, but it doesn't mean have doesn't have to mean that the trend will continue necessarily. Uh, also, this will turn into pink if there are five candles that are breaking that. So, you know, you have to take it as a discretionary uh, thing. Uh, not all the time when they're red or green diamonds is the trend necessarily going to continue, right? That's something we have to be aware of. Daily chart. All right, we got already bullish momentum, as you can see here. And um, it seems likely that the price will push up 
yesterday we already said that that this is most likely we, we were also saying that this could do like that but if we do find support at these fibs that a continuation up to these targets seems likely we did at the 61.8 fib as you can see so it seems like we're in that follow through uh, to the upside at this point on the uh, the daily four hour chart this seems to be an abc zigzag correction We had divergence between these bottoms as well, as you can see. And we got green diamonds on the four hour chart indicating already, uh, you know, the fact that we're an uptrend on this time frame. So there are a lot of bullish arguments to, to be made. We still have a green, dark green diamond here, not a light green. So this is only the, you know, this is the fourth candle, the fifth candle. So it looks still good for uh, basically a continuation of this swing high, swing low. As soon as this turns light green, then we might basically get a correction or a consolidation type of formation before we see the follow through. So at this moment, we still have a green light um, on the four hours. So let's go to the hourly. On the four hour, we don't have a setup as, at this moment because, um, you know, the setups for the four hour chart were a good one was here, for instance, when this turned basically from thick to thin red. All right, hourly chart. All right, we got a good hourly candle. We have uh, basically green fractals. We have momentum. So there are a lot of ways we could have taken this trade. For instance, here on the turn of this, from thick red to thin red, that would have been the end of the retracement. That would have been the end of this correction. And we would have been basically looking for a continuation of this momentum, right? That could have been uh, one setup based on the oscillator. Uh, if we're looking for fractals, then even now could be a setup. The break of these fractals, we have green diamonds on four hour and hourly, right? So that would be a second way. And because we have momentum even on this time frame, we can even look to the 15 minute chart. You don't want to dive into, I think, two lower time frames all the time, but if you have momentum on your side, then basically you can you could do that if you want to, and if you if you think you have the experience to, uh, because you're basically trying to catch a piece of that momentum uh, before the momentum fades away. Now you always have to be careful that the, you know, that the momentum will pass, will die down eventually, and you will see that first on the lower time frames. So you don't want to do that too, uh, too long, uh, too often. But uh, at the beginning to about you know, halfway, a big momentum, uh, you can still do that. And how do you know when momentum has a bigger chance of dying down? Well, there will be double divergence, even triple divergence on lower time frames, and often will be near close to a fib target or close to a supporter resistance level. So from this perspective, um, I think that you know there's not necessarily any danger of supporter resistance. Uh, at this point, we had already a respect for the top, but now we're this is a second approach, so it's a different story. If we would have been basically here yesterday i would have said don't trade it right into the previous top now we already basically tested that so this is a retest or or a second attempt which is always um, a bit easier uh, for price to break through it unless 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 these fractals are not dark green all right because then the momentum is not on our side anymore but as long as these stay dark green uh basically we have momentum on our side and as this is the second attempt to break the resistance there's a fair chance we will do so so i hope that that's not too complicated uh, but if it is let me know so uh, we should be able to keep an eye on this 50 minute chart and we actually had a setup on the 50 minute chart right here when the oscillator turned for instance from thick to thin on this candle or again, the break of these fractals. Now we're actually above those fractals. So one way of doing that would be maybe to even put a fib from here to here and look for a pullback uh, to the 61.8 or 50 and look for basically a dip for continuation upwards. Um, another way 
you know, that we can basically um, handle this as the five minute chart, wait for price to go down to the fib, wait for price to bounce, okay? Uh, wait for a hook back. Once we get a pink fractal here or, or a circle, then basically price has respected the fib and there's a good continuation chance. That would be, again, an alternative way to tackle a continuation to the upside. All right. Yeah. If you like, so if you like this uh, Eckler's uh, Fisher, just write me an email. I mean, these. Uh, this has been. Uh, uh, I'll send you the one I particularly have. All right, and you can test that for yourself. And I, I do like. I do definitely agree with you, Ronald. I, I uh, must say that it's one of the the best ones I uh, I've worked with uh, regarding oscillators. I, I really like awesome oscillator. But since I've been using this one, or since I've rediscovered this one, I mean, I've been, I saw it already a while back, but then um, I didn't continue. And when I rediscovered it again, I thought, oh boy, this is really actually uh, great. Um, Z10 on the daily chart, there's a reversal pin yesterday. Shouldn't today continue to downside? Let's take a look. Yeah, it's, it's a good observation. Uh, and something that I didn't notice, um, and this is something to be to be cautious of. Indeed, I agree. It's a, it's a big wick. It's a bearish close. Um, so you know, it's 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 something that could definitely be a cause for price just to stay in this range, or or perhaps make a retracement. All right. So from that point of view, looking at the daily candle is always a good thing as well. Absolutely, good observation, and thanks for that. And from that point of view, it's going to be important if this turns into uh, light green. Because if that turns into light green, as soon as this four-hour candle closes, um, I would actually wait one more candle. So if the, this or the next candle does not break this top, then that daily candle, I would get rid of all longs, basically. Because then that daily candle becomes even more important. All right, because in that case, we can consider this to be a small momentum and that this is a failure to break and then we could see ABC correction, just like we saw on the euro dollar yesterday. So that's something that time will tell. It's uh, good to know about the daily candle, but I think it especially becomes important if this and next candle on the four hour chart do not break that top. All right, let's see. Pound New Zealand. Andrew had a couple of favorites. Pound New Zealand, odd pound. Um, cat pound. So let's take a look at that. We will have, of course, I wanted to say something about pound. We, we have a lot of quietness, I think, on the pound now. Of course, big volatility. Look at the pound yen. It's just basically going flat. That's not typical for the pound yen. I do think that it has to do with the referendum. The pound USD also quieted down, as you can see, substantially. So I think we're at this moment really seeing a, a slowdown of price prior to the, the, the big event. And um, yeah, that's something that uh, could, ha could continue easily for maybe up to Thursday evening or Friday morning when we might see the new, the first kind of polls or any rumors could change this, of course, as well. Or not rumors, but... Um, polls and then and opinions etc but for the moment i think any movement will not be technical if it is technical it's probably going to go sideways uh, so that's regarding the pound uh regarding pound new zealand in general pound new zealand let's take a look various momentum on the monthly on the weekly, on the daily. Um, four hour chart is a bit of a mixture. It is actually showing that it was a large correction to the upside. And hourly is bearish at this point. But it's, it's basically not moving on the 50 minute chart all too much. So I think, you know, I, 
let's take a look more at examples for the past, perhaps because at this moment, as I said, the, the market is not so technical. But uh, if we would have used, for instance, a four-hour chart for trend, okay, and you use the, the fractals here for an indication, uh, then you can see that these circles are strong support. The diamonds show that we're trading up. But eventually, of course, the diamonds will, at one point, we'll get that lower high and we'll see a reversal. And that happened right there. Most of the diamonds indeed worked well and showed that the, the correct direction to trade was upside. And the, the circles indicate the support, basically, right? And you can see that the moving averages were aligned and uh, that basically when things were dark blue, we had momentum. And when we were basically in red, we were tracing uh, in this structure, at least. All right. So eventually, we're going to get a reversal or a tracement. And that's what happened here. That's actually a couple of weeks ago when we were talking live, one of the few reversal trades that I said, this does look very good for reversals. I'm not a, a big reversal trader, as you might know, but at certain occasions, things line up and there's a lot of evidence for a strong chance of a reversal. In that case, I'm not going to ignore that. I thought that there was a good chance of, of a bearish retracement, uh, at least an ABC zigzag at the minimum. What well, actually turned out to be a big reversal. I thought this was the minimum, but it actually went a lot further than that. That's sometimes difficult to know. Uh, but the call that it was a retracement was correct, and you can see big downside. So if we look at the oscillator when it was moving up and down, the points where basically it's thick red or thick blue or turns back into thick red are always very interesting, right? Because that's where we have the most momentum. So uh, when we got into the downtrend here. Let's see. Here was actually the first uh, turning spot from, from dark blue to thin blue. But let's focus on the, uh, the momentum part here. OK, so the four hour chart, let's use the four hour as our uh, momentum chart or trend chart on the hourly as more of a, an entry or um, retracement. And we can even zoom in lower. So on the hourly, you can see as soon as, as we had actually a retracement here, and this was the point where we get continuation, right, with the momentum bar right here. Uh, we had one here too. And we had one um, even here. But these are small candles. I do think that you still want to look at price action for a decent candle size like this or this. Here we had a retracement end right here as uh, basically uh, within the four hour chart, we still had a downtrend, but on the hourly chart, we were retracing like this, made a correction. And here you see nicely indicating the end of that correction. So those are ways you could use uh, basically the oscillator. Um, and on the hourly chart, of course, you also already have fractals pointing in our way. You have support resistance fractals basically giving uh, extra confluence there. What else are we going to talk about today? You could use fibs as well, of course. Uh, but in this case, I don't see, well, you could maybe fib it from here all the way down to here. But that's a very shallow fib, so not so useful. And from a pattern point of view, last but not least, this was, of course, a correction. This was a bear flag. So that's just one example, I guess, how you can use those four things to um, analyze the market and find potential uh, set of space on that analysis. Maybe let's take a look at an upside example. I don't want to cherry pick here that, you know, I don't want to necessarily. Um, so why don't we just, uh, I don't know what to. Why don't we use something that is counter trend? Uh, let me think for a second. I want to basically the whole idea is to, you know, when you have the oscillators and the fractals aligned, those are, of course, always the best moves. Um, reversal trades are always a bit riskier. Uh, from that point of view, looking for Alignment is, is better, for instance, if these oscillators and these oscillators are aligned. 
here that there's more alignment, of course, uh, than if, if both are contrary to each other. So from that point of view, we had the best alignment from this point. Right, but up in here was already was still a, a potential trade because, but it was a reversal trade. From here, it's actually a with the trend trade. All right, so you know I can dive into more examples, but I think you you get the point. You could use basically uh, fibs, uh, patterns, this oscillator, and um, fractals to get a very good hold and understanding of of what's going on. I think you can use the oscillator for momentum. You can use uh, the fractals for direction and support of resistance, or trend and support of resistance, and you can use basically patterns and fibs to get a get, you know, understanding where uh, price uh, can continue uh, with the trend and um, patterns for potential breakouts. Because if price doesn't retrace to your fib, then you could take that breakout. So it's very good for uh, trading purposes. So let me put it in a, in, a, in a box like this. Oscillator, trend or momentum. Then we have the fractals. That's the trend and support or resistance. So with those two, you can already have a good idea about what direction you want to trade. And then you can you know, add those patterns and fibs for more tactical purposes. So let's give one more example with that in mind, maybe on pound odd. Well, let's, yeah, okay, why not pound odd? So let's use an hourly chart this time as a trend momentum. All right, so let's take a look at the, um, the oscillator for that. So we see basically strong trend from here onwards. Let's put a line right there. All right, there we go. And then again here. So that's when we have basically the momentum to the upside, the oscillators are aligned. Uh, transform is up clearly. This is the second time it's up after this. So it's not a retracement anymore. Uh, also, this one is aligned if, you know, that's clear. We still have red fractals, okay, that's true. But we also have a couple of pink ones here indicating that uh, things are changing. So we also have circles still indicating that it's, it's more of a downside. But if we break above those circles, that would be a key moment. You see, the thing is that with the, the diamonds, there's normally the direction you want to trade to, unless you're seeing signs of reversals. Uh, and because of the momentum, uh, we can see that the, the shift to the other side. We also see divergence between these bottoms. So we also see pink diamonds. So those are all things warning us that we could see a, a, a move into the other direction. The confirmation of such would be when we break through um, these these opposite fractals, these circles that are now resistance. Uh, that would be you know the confirmation that we could be moving to the new direction. So we can put even a line there like that. So let's, this is the hourly chart we use. In this case, this example is a trend, so we can use 15 for looking for patterns and fibs for entries. All right. So for instance, here you can see, uh, if we're waiting to, here you can see the momentum already on our side. These are the blue lines that we have from the hourly chart. So when we lose momentum here, for instance, or here, those could be already setups. If we want to wait for the break of the purple line, <clears throat> excuse me, then we could wait for a fractal break, or we can wait for this moment to happen. First to break, pullback continue. In that case, uh, we have basically here, push, break, let's say pullback and continue. The continuation would be the first time we regain momentum, which is here on this candle. And that could be a, 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 an entry as well, besides the ones that we had here, here, or the fractal break. Another method using uh, fibs would be to fib the breakout, look for pullback at these fibs. Uh, from a pattern point of view, uh, basically we had a sideways box. 
All right, so from that point of view, trading the bottom of that sideways box or the break are all potential uh, methods to trade it. When trading the breakout, though, always be careful of the higher time frame and to make sure it has a good breakout candle. And the first breakout candle that closed above that purple line was this one. All right, so that could be the breakout candle as well. That's an extra confirmation, um, even if you're trading the 15, to make sure that the higher time frame uh, does show that the breakout has an, enough power, basically, to close near the high. All right. So <clears throat> I know that you know this is uh, normally I focus only on one or two things. I threw in four things today. So are there any questions, perhaps, based on that at this moment? I think that. Uh, Otherwise, uh, we'll keep it at here for the moment, but by all means, please let me know if you have questions. Feel free to write me in, in an email, and um, if you're interested in more webinars with Admiral Markets, please join us tomorrow night, Fibonacci Advanced Part 1. I'm going to dive into more fibs, and uh, that's a two-part series. I'm looking forward to that. I love fibs. So that's going to be exciting for me. We're going to have it this Thursday, next week, Thursday. So I hope to see you in that. Of course, next week we have uh, basically a, a new lineup, or the same lineup as always, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And we'll be diving into all the details regarding um, what happened this week and how it affects the market. Uh, let's see. Do you think it's worth trading for a dollar yen now? <clears throat> let's take a look. And uh, let's see. Thank you, Rono. Thank you very much for your thank yous. I also appreciate the fact that you are in here together with others on this Wednesday morning. I appreciate your time as well. And let's see. Dollar yen is still pushing lower, but seems like yeah i was looking for 61.8 yesterday i'm not sure how i fibbed it yesterday if i fibbed it like this or this i don't remember um, anyhow i think uh, it did hit the zone 105 or 105.50 i was talking about yesterday so anyone in that trade is um, could probably be up in profit at this moment. It hit 105.10, actually. <clears throat> so I probably had a fib like this, I guess. Anyhow, it doesn't matter. It hit that, that zone. It doesn't matter. At this point, I think that uh, yeah, it's, there's a good chance of continuation, I would say. I'm just looking, let me use the template we've been using so far today. <clears throat> and this is a mini terminal, by the way, it's very useful for, uh, for making quicker trading decisions. It's part of the MT4 Supreme Edition, just like uh, this alarm manager is as well. All right, back to the dollar yen. Let's see. We got a red diamond here, dark red diamond. We got momentum to the downside. Now, on a four hour chart, it looks like we're finishing our correction soon because this is potentially turning from thick to thin. So it could be a trade, indeed, if we break perhaps through this uh, fractal with the close near the low. But I don't know. It's 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 possible. It's just that I guess the stop loss would have to be above here, and we're pretty close to the bottom. So I, I think that, 
or the stop loss may be above this fractal on the hourly chart like that so if a candle closes like this below this this purple line with stop loss above it and try to trail stop each hourly candle because the thing is that we never know when this market can all of a sudden turn into consolidation and what could happen is that price could break show some indecision and then start to move up like that and then stay within the zone all right that's what i'm a bit scared of in this environment personally uh, but it could still be worth a try but then being very careful with the trade management and if we see signs that price is you know showing some dojis here like that then get out of that you know i that's possible uh, if you're in the short already i think just moving the stop loss above here and moving it to break even or or if you're up with from here from the 105 exactly then locking in profit um basically why i said this earlier today is that it's always great if, if it's possible to trade at a decision spot here it's more about halfway than an actual decision spot that's the disadvantage of trading it about halfway you know with a news event like that coming up because it could be uh, become a, basically a, a zone uh, of sideways movement so it's possible it, i mean if it were not for that event i think it would be a good breakout actually but now that's a bit different otherwise i, I do think it would have been a good breakout all right folks thank you so much for being here and uh if you have any questions on this later on after using it yourself or after thinking about it uh, if you have any questions on patterns fibs or fibs you can ask me tomorrow but uh, on patterns oscillators or or the um, fractals just write me an email feel free to do so and uh, i hope to see you in tomorrow's webinar and wish you all great trading cheers